On Red Easy's Day, uh, it's really, really important to recognize the importance of collaboration. Collaboration among patients, collaboration with patient advocacy groups, collaborations with the physicians, collaborations with regulatory agencies, collaboration with the sponsor. It's a whole ecosystem and it really takes the interactions between these groups to really put forth a successful rare disease drug development program. So I'm hoping, you know, as there's more awareness going on on rare diseases that these collaborations will increase and that there'll be more therapies brought into the market because there's such a huge unmet need in this area. There are about 7,000 rare diseases and of the 7,000 rare diseases, only 5% have any form of treatment. So that means 95% of all rare diseases don't have a treatment. So imagine if you're a rare disease patient, right? Chances are that your indication doesn't have a treatment. And because rare diseases are, are also have a strong genetic component, there's also variation between the types of treatments that will be applicable for the patient. Another factor that affects them is also the fact that they are often misdiagnosed. The average rare disease patient receives two to three misdiagnoses and sees about seven specialists before they get a correct diagnosis. Sponsors have to really think strategically as they embark on a drug development program. One of the things we recommend for them to do from the onset is to one, understand the natural history of the disease. It's very surprising how many times this isn't done. What is the natural history of this disease? What is the progression of this disease? And as you understand, as a sponsor understands the natural history, they're able to get a lot of data that will inform them even with their own clinical trial, right? Because then they're able to identify the patients, they're able to maybe even look at what endpoints will be clinically significant. Clinical endpoints are important, but more and more importantly, I think pharmaceutical companies and sponsors are tending towards patient endpoints, making sure that this drug is significant, is meaningful for the patient. Uh, involving patient advocacy very early on is a critical and important consideration because there are very, very few rare disease treatments and many of these patients gravitate immediately to the patient advocacy groups to find solutions, to get answers, to get help, to connect with other patients that are just like them. So the patient ad advocacy group is often a treasure trove of information for a sponsor. Um, they can help them identify patients, they can help them understand endpoints, they can get involved with the, with, the, with the sponsor and meet regulatory agencies, for example, to highlight or to buttress why a particular endpoint is helpful. Because the rare disease community is a very um, closely knit community, for any sponsors or any service companies such as CROs that want to be involved, have to really show that they are a partner with the community. They have to be engaged with the community. They have to be at the table with the community. They have to be able to really understand um, what a patient walks through, what the patient journey looks like, so that any solutions that they bring or they put forth are meaningful for the patient.